Now, um, this is a video I've been thinking about doing for a while now because I thought Rio was a pretty terrible major, contender for worst ever. I think this Blast Paris one, absolute contender for worst ever. Like, quite frankly, it's only because Vitality won. I think people even consider it redeemable because it's got a cool story that Z will won one at the end and Apex and Dupree. Like, think about this for a second, guys. There's a world where Into the Breach could have beaten them, but okay, that's less reasonable. Apex very much could have beaten Vitality. Imagine that was Gamer Legion versus Apex in the final. So we only need one match to go differently and then let whoever you want win that one. Let it be Apex, let it be Gamer Legion. Would that be thought of as an all-time great major? I don't know about that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do one of those tier lists and I'm going to take my own sort of approach to this because the other thing is, I think I'm one of the only people who can actually do this. I not only watched all these majors, I worked most of them. I mean, not most of them technically because it was 19 and I think I worked eight, but I worked many of them and I obviously was around the whole time during all these and I remember all the games and all the great matches. So we'll go over to the site. We're going to use one of these tier lists here and don't worry, it's a nightmare for me too at the bottom with some of these icons. So what I've done is I've put them all in order. So if we start here, this one's Dream Act Winter 2013, and then this one's the 19th Blast Paris. They're all in order now, so we can't go wrong. When it comes to ranking this, essentially there's three main categories I think we care about. There's the quality of the matches and the amount of memorable matches. That just is a massive factor as to whether you feel good feelings towards a major. It's why I've always said it, a bit like Face It London had no chance, had no great playoff matches. The format's pretty key. You've got to have some aspect of format that doesn't wreck it completely, which I will say plays heavily against early majors, which would be your ones. And then the obvious other thing is problems at the event itself, logistics running the stream. If there was issues with PCs or silly things added by Valve, all some aggregate of all of these things combined is what's going to decide whether it's a really good major or not. And so what I thought we'll do is, because we've got 19 of them to rank, and I'll, I've got plenty of info I can give you about them, I think what we'll do is we'll initially just do a quick tier list of feel and then we'll sort in between. And then I'll also give you my rankings among the different tiers. I won't just leave it at tiers. I'm not a coward. I'll just tell you what I actually think is the number one major and what I think is the 19th best major. So what we'll do is initially we'll just quickly put some of them in spots that seem legit. So we've got obviously S, A, B, C, D because using that like sort of like Asian style of system where S is the best, not A. Because, again, they just have their own system. It's what they use in StarCraft, to be fair. S-tier, Flash, j -Dong. So, immediately, we'll start with some of the worst. Right, The obvious ones, I feel like, are massive contenders for the worst ones. Have to be... PGL Krakow. I mean, there was literally, like, PC problems at this event. That seemed like it, it crippled it. Face It, London, Major, another one. Bad games, PC issues. Let me see. What else are we thinking of for this category? We've got to go with Blast Paris, right? Blast Paris has got to be up there too. I am Rio as well. A lot of issues there. Crowd aspects. These four immediately are candidates for the worst major ever held, in my opinion. Then we're going to go put some of the best ones, the ones that I hold in high esteem. So I'm immediately thinking like E-League Atlanta, fantastic major. ESL War Cologne, 2016, another really good major. Uh, MLG Columbus, by the way, these are, interestingly enough, the first three of the... Oh, that's it. That, that was in 20... No, these are the first three of the Million Dollar Majors, interestingly enough. Then, is there anything else a candidate for Best Major ever? I don't think so. Antwerp, certainly not. Stockholm, nah. Berlin was kind of a bit of a weird one, wasn't it? Kadovica 2019, not really that great. Boston's pretty good. I'm going to put Boston in here tier. Boston's pretty good, although even then I think we'll get to that. Dreamhack Cluj did have a lot of interesting games. Had a very stacked tournament. It wasn't that well run necessarily. Cologne 2015, I feel like was a very good tournament. That can certainly be up there. Got some of these Kadovicas. Which were the best Kadovicas though? Kind of, he'd say 2015 was a pretty good one. From what I remember, that can go there as well. Dream Act Winter wasn't that great. It was the first major. We can definitely put that one there. EMS one, kind of, he'd say. How many actual good games were there here, though? That's the problem, right? There wasn't actually that many good games. People forget that. That's probably in B. 
Dreamac Winter, the one that was owned by LDLC with the Olaf boost. That's probably in B as well, I'm thinking. Cologne 2014 was the one that was absolute bullshit, won by NIP. But it did have some very memorable games. I've got to say, so that'll probably go to C, potentially B for that. Clues to Poker, like I said, I think I actually had some pretty good games. It's a pretty stacked event. That's probably B for now. Kadovice 2019 was just a good tournament, right? It was just a very well-run tournament. Didn't have necessarily all the best games in the playoffs. Had some pretty good ones. Obviously, the Navi Ents one delivered. Probably put that B for now. Berlin. Where should Berlin go? Because this is an era with a much better format. A lot of teams, the playoffs are a bit whack. Maybe that's going to C. Stockholm feels like it's right in a B. I mean, the online era stuff killed that. I feel like similar for Antwerp. Similar vibe. Didn't really have that many good games in the playoffs, though, did it? I'd like the heroic Navi one sort of got going. N Swan was just cooked in the semis. Spirit Phase was good, and then the final was a banger. I do think it's one of the better finals we've had. So I'm feeling that that probably goes B. So there we go. We've actually got the initial spread. I'm actually liking this pretty much so far. So let's go through them all, shall we? And we'll start up here. And we'll figure out where we need to change them. So first one I have here is E-League Atlanta. Now, this is the one where you obviously had Astralis win their first major ever. So great storyline. They were the number one team around this period of time. It was the first tournament to actually use Swiss system. I wasn't a big fan. It was best of ones back then. I, I don't really know if Bucolts is better or worse at this point in time. I just hate the way Swiss seeding works because of the seeding at majors not being done properly. Astralis actually powered up as the event went on. They lost some of the games in the Swiss system to some of the other big opponents out there who were like, oh my God, big close games. But then as the playoffs went on, they got stronger and stronger and stronger. And in the final, they overcame the final boss, Virtus Pro, one of the teams that had always had great games, but always pretty much vanquished them in the big moments. So I think that's a pretty solid one to still be number one. It might even be my best major of all time. Cologne 2016 is the one obviously where SK at the time did their era going back to back. They won in incredible fashion. Only team to win a map off them was Virtus Pro. That was an epic semi-final, by the way. Obviously, earlier on, they even had the game against Flipside in the round of eight, where Blade did like the crazy brand new nuke pick, which almost worked. It was like an OT game against SK. Um, you had the group of death that SK was in, which had G2, who'd just beaten them at ECS. You had FaZe, who, yes, didn't used to make playoffs at the time, but they had some dangerous play players in the team and they can do an upset like they did over Fnatic. You had Fnatic, top three, top four team in the world. People thought they might be in the final of this match. So basically, three of the top four or five teams in the world were in one group and only two could get out and it ended up being SK and Fnatic. G2 didn't get to get out of this group and FaZe obviously just had to fuck off and later on they got Carrigan later in the year. Um, mega competitive major in my opinion. I do think the VP SK semi-final is basically the true final. It's a really epic match. and go watch that. VP could have won this major, even though they were in their slump at the time. Um, <coughs> Team Liquid and Simple did the really epic run. They did an all right run at the one before where they got out of a tricky group and then they beat CLG, but then they lost those silly games where they reached map point and choked it away against Luminosity, who won the major. This time around, they lost again to the major champions because they made the final, but they beat Na'Vi when they were world-class, simple having a nice performance there. They beat Fnatic, simple going crazy in that one, doing the 1v2 that got the graffiti. Yeah, I think this one's just one of the best majors ever, isn't it? Like, the final's shit, but it says much about how good the rest of the major is that I still remember it so fondly. Then MLG Columbus, the first of the million dollar majors. I think this was a pretty cool one. This was the one where it was the first major on NA soil and the crowd really delivered in that like Columbus, whatever it's called, the arena that the Blue Jackets play in from the NHL. Uh, you had the Luminosity Gaming run where they'd only just brought in Taco, Zeus and FNX like a few months earlier. And now they win the majors, their first big land together that they won. That's epic. They'd lost the kind of Itza final. They'd even lost the Leipzig final to Na'Vi. Now they come through and they win a major. That was epic. And you had the Cold Zero jumping up shot with the graffiti. You know, it's a BS player. Team Liquid had their own run, like I say, was simple. You had Na'Vi who beat Astralis, who beat Fnatic. So it's like, if Fnatic had been in the final, would Luminosity have beaten them? Well, they hadn't at the time. If Na'Vi had been in the final, 
they have gone back and forth. If Astralis had been the final, would they have beaten? Who knows? Who knows? But in the end, Navi actually sort of fucked it for Fnatic and Astralis because that was the one where when they made it to the final, Guardian apparently had the hand injury and he had like 3.5 to 4 times his mouse sensitivity. He played like total shit. Flamey went ham. The first map was the OT one. Then Flamey looked tilted to fuck because they lost it. And then they got rocked on overpass too easily. And quite frankly, you start to wonder, should they save some of those boosts from Calavice instead of wasting them in the semis, which they also lost that match? Wouldn't it have been cooler to use it in the final? Saddest part about this major, by the way, is the maps for the final were perfect. It was the three maps he'd won. We just never got to have a proper three map game if it was like a one and a half map game without it ended up being, although I guess the first one was OT. So I think these, these three are all very solid to stay here. These are real contenders for the best major ever on all grounds. I mean, what issues were there at these majors as well? Now, should anyone move up and down though? Because Boston, oh, I already know I've got some of y'all right triggered, right? Just because you're an NA fan doesn't mean Boston was the best major ever, you idiot. What an auto pee on you are. That was a final that had two good maps. The first map was a massive like letdown from C9 towards the end of it when they'd been leading and they blow the game. The second map, somehow they just roll fears on overpass completely. Nico plays like shit. No one even knows what happened there. The third map, they were about to lose. It was going to be a slightly comfortable win for fears, but then the massive OT, the comeback to go to OT, the Stewie play, which probably should have a graffiti, by the way. Then you go into OT. There's all sorts of epic shit going on. Finally, C9 wins. That wasn't the best final. It wasn't the best major. And I'll just add this in right now. Everyone forgets this. This is the major where Quantum, Bellator, Fire and Boom, it's just bullshit, made the round of eight for no reason. And were terrible. Probably the worst team to ever make the round of eight of a major. Although, I'd have to reconsider that now with some of the squads I saw recently make it. So, that one was nonsense already. Mouse Sports could have really done something in this major, but they had to play Faze in the first round. And then Nico did that bullshit fucking kill through the molly or nuke into the lower bomb side threw the whole game off I always wondered what would happen if it, Mouse was on a different side of the bracket what, they would have been in the semis maybe they even could have been in the final I'd like to see them play against C9 quite frankly if you think of some of the months earlier um, this was also the one where yeah C9 did the big run but here's why the run wasn't that sick because the team they beat in the um semi-finals was SK Gaming, but this was an SK Gaming had to use Phelps, who at the time they'd already kicked and they'd gotten bolts and won the three tournaments the previous year, but he wasn't eligible to play with them. And so they had to use Phelps, but then they petulantly even said that they cared more about winning like... I can't remember if it was ESG or some other tournament. They cared more about winning that than winning the major and downplayed the major. And so they said they mainly practiced with Bolts and not with Phelps. So they made it to the semis, but that means they weren't like the true SK. If they'd have been SK with Bolts, they were considered the number one team by many people. In my rankings, they weren't because FaZe attended more events and got more top placings. But they were considered like the spiritual number one team in the world at the time was SK Gaming. So if you don't remember, before this major, everyone was like, even if FaZe wins, it doesn't mean they're actually the best because SK wasn't taking the real lineup. Although, spoiler, right after this they got banged out at CS Summit with Waltz and they never did anything with that line but actually this was the end of their time as a top top team they kind of became less and less relevant as the years went on so to me Boston's a, just a bit of an overrated major it doesn't have as many, many memorable games as you think the storylines aren't as good it seemed like it was a good major in terms of how it was run that's why I'm giving it A tier here I think it deserves to be there I don't think it deserves to be boosted into S tier even though certainly that was a very epic ending to the final yeah so to me, I think we're keeping that here. In terms of ESL1 Clone 2015, there's a world where I could actually move this up to S tier. I'm thinking about it right now because this is the major where Taz came out and did that speech when Fnatic had beaten VP and the crowd was booing Olaf Meister. This was the match that had the epic Fnatic timeout where they were losing on the second map with VP upper map and then up with a big lead. It was Inferno. Prolux did the timeout. Apparently, they didn't discuss anything epic, but they came back in the game. They turned it all around. They won the match. Yes, later, after this, you'd have like the... Dubai revenge for VP and they won that event but this was a major like remember this is the the back-to-back -back majors for Fnatic this is one that they won this is their era defined in, in part thanks to this major in the final they made met their rivals Envious this time the Kenny S and Apex won and beat them in the final I think it was the first event that lineup even played together uh, although they might have played that like Gamescom right before it. So, and first like proper major, proper big tournament. There was lots of good matches at this one. Lots of good matches. I mean, remember this is like I said, so there's another one with uh, the, oh, it's the semi-finals was when VP played for night because in the quarters it was Nip versus VP. 
you obviously had um, the envious guys always used to play epic games against like Navi into TSM. Like there, there was some, this was a really competitive major. It's one of my favorite periods of CS. This is when the op that happened. Kenny S wasn't quite as good in the final with Envious, famously, after they lost the Dust 2, had that amazing round by Crims to come back. Probably should have a graffiti too. You then had, in the same match, you had the silly graffiti of Apex facing all the Fnatic Ops in OT. And then in the second map, it was Cobblestone. Kenny S played badly in famously. He cried, and I wrote that article about him, didn't I? But he went, came out to win the next major with the MVP, so don't worry, fans. So this is also, by the way, interestingly... Cold Zera's debut. So you know what? Actually, maybe that does deserve to go up to S tier. Maybe that one does deserve to. Makes sense, by the way, that two Colognes would be there. I think Cologne's just the best event in the history of CSGO. Then we've got Kadavit 2015, is that? I think that says 2015. Yes, it must be because 2016 wasn't a major. Um, this was one where, again, I think this is a very good major, actually. Thing is, though, I might actually take some of these out of S. Like, there should probably only be a couple in S, then a bunch in A, some in B. Yeah, I think it's probably more for, and only a couple for D as well. We should really narrow it down. So I think what we'll say for this one is, Kadavice could well be in S tier. It was good enough. Like, this is the first one that Fnatic was able to win with the Olaf Meister Crims lineup. They'd be in the final. It's really their second event of Cologne 2014, but that was bullshit the way that event went. We'll get to that soon. Then they had, obviously, the Olaf Pass boost at the next one. So finally, they win this major. As I've said in the past, this Fnatic team really could have won four majors in a row. Um, they not only won it, which started off the like true part of their era with the big event. Olaf Meister was the best player in the world and was unbeatable with the Tech 9 at this time. It was the one where Nip did that miracle comeback against TSM in the quarterfinals when TSM already was technically supposed to be better. You had then Envious, who always used to beat NIP, lost them in the semis. There's that whole thing where maybe Shocks went out drinking the night before and maybe Hastro even admitted in an interview that he let it happen and went to the club with him for some weird reason. I don't really know what... Story. I think he was trying to tell a story about bonding with a player. There. I remember just thinking, like, is that the is that the end of the story? This is also, by the way, one of the first majors... It was the first major Fallen qualified for in CSGO, and he made top eight because his team, Keith Stars at the time, used to just win the PO1s and make top eight. That happened the first three majors, even though they didn't used to win series at the time. Um, this is where Kenny S and Titan Mega failed again, and this time the AWP had been nerfed, and Kenny was starting to drop off a little bit. Yeah, this was a pretty epic major, actually, the more I think about it. Like, the final was a really great game between Fnatic and Nip. You had the NIP upsets, but over the best teams in the world. You had Fnatic playing against um, VP in the semis. A classic matchup. Always a great one to watch. Yeah, what's the hate about this one? Shouldn't this really be, like, a contender for the best one as well? Hmm, that's interesting. Because they can't all be the best, can they? So if Boston doesn't get to go up there... Kadavice was a very good one. Cologne was a very good one. Columbus. Does Columbus get to be at high up though? Because how many actual good games were at Columbus? That's why I'd ask you. Like, think about this. TSM Navi was a bit whatever because the first map just didn't go well enough for TSM. The final was shit. Luminosity Liquid was very exciting, even then not three maps, but it doesn't have to be to be close. VP versus LG was very good. Fnatic versus Astralis was shocking, but it wasn't necessarily a good game. Na'Vi played against Nip, but Nip had threat as a stand-in because Pitt hadn't been able to get him with his visa or something silly. And then CLG played against TL. I don't know if the matches allow that to actually be. I think the matches actually mean Columbus shouldn't be number one because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and aggregate all of them, remember. So I think for matches, actually MLG has to go down to A tier because for matches, by the way, these are some bangers. There's some really good matches in here. I feel like that should make it go down more. Then let's look at the B tier. So this is Kadavice. Oh, that's the first one, EMS 1. Right, 1, even ESL didn't think that was a top, top of X EMS, was ESL Major Series, wasn't it? It wasn't ESL 1 that didn't exist at the time. The problem with this one is it had... It was the first one in the Spore deck. That's a positive, and a proper crowd. Still be your ones just for the whole group stage. Uh, this is where VP did the plow and wrecked everyone. They only lost one map, and that was in the semis to who? That's right, Olaf Meister, Crimson Dennis's LGB, who beat them in an overtime game on Mirage, the map that the time they were unbeatable on. That was like, there was a couple of good games here, 
There wasn't many, though, because you have to remember, VP smashed everyone except that one map against LGB. They even smashed Nip in the final. Nip themselves smashed Dignitas, which meant it wasn't that interesting in a semi. And then Dignitas had smashed Hellraisers. Basically, it was like Nip versus Call. Well, there was like a map that Call won where Swag went ham on what Dust 2 or something. That actually wasn't that great a major, come to think of it, in terms of matches. The matches didn't really live up to it. The way the major was run was a bit janky back then. It certainly wasn't a bad major, though. I feel like B is maybe... The problem is with the factors around it, though. Like I say, how many memorable matches and games? Oh, there's also the one, by the way, where... No, you didn't actually have a... You didn't have a graffiti for this one, actually. Nah, I don't... I, I think this maybe moves down to C. I think maybe Katowice moves down to C. Then let's keep going. So this one was DreamHack Winter 2014, the one won by LDLC. Epic final, by the way, back and forth with NIP. The thir third map was Overpass, and it was Overtime. Um, one of the all-time great teams. NIP with Makalele was doing an awesome run too, beat Hellraisers, VP. Then in the final, they almost won the event. They were actually on championship point. Forrest was having a throwback event. Um, this is the one where you also had Simple make his debut. You had the fanatic people thought they cheated before the event, even a bunch of pro players and wouldn't shake their hand. You have the Olaf boost, which everyone was like losing their mind when it happened and they won the series. But then you have the drama about the forfeit, which I think was a very poor way to decide that major. That That's probably points off the major right there. You had, um, obviously, the Olaf boost, Olaf boost got that graffiti. Simple made his debut for Hellraisers, beat Fnatic in the opener, Mirage, one of their best maps. Uh, Dignitas did an epic fail in their quarters against Na'Vi where they picked Cobblestone even though they didn't play that but because also the other team didn't play that and then managed to get smashed on it and got rocked out their quarters and that was the last major that Fetish ever played with the team and after that in came Carrigan I even heard the rumours they might get Glaive even back then so actually that's making me think this wasn't actually that good a major like I do remember the final was pretty good the VP series against it was actually pretty good actually too can that stay in B then? Because it wasn't necessarily like PC problems. Logistically, the way it was run was a bit, eh. I hate the forfeit thing. Maybe that should go to C. Maybe that should go to C tier. Then we've got Dream Act Open, Clusion of Poker. At Dream Act, Clusion of Poker, remember the G2 team, which was sort of the Kingwin boys when they still had Dennis. Scream had already gone at this point in time over the, G the Titan at the time. One round for making the final when they were against the envious guys in the final. They'd beaten Vertus Pro on LAN already in the quarters. This was a really epic run. Uh, Rain obviously making himself known. Jacob having a pop-off tournament. TSM got upset by NIP. NIP themselves almost lost to Titan in the group stage. Then when TSM got to the semis, uh, sorry, Nip got to the semis, they got absolutely rocked by Na'Vi. Guardian and Flemmy went ham and Na'Vi made the final. I actually think Guardian was the sleeper OP. He was the MVP of this tournament for me, but Kenny S won it because Envy has won the tournament. After the roster swap, Kenny S got his major and his MVP. Okay, fair enough. This also interestingly had that amazing AZ clip with the Deagle on Inferno against Virtus Pro, one of the best LAN clips you will ever see in your life. It's no wonder after that G2 signed him when they were replacing Dennis when he went off to Fnatic. Um, this was where the Fnatic dynasty ended. Envious just rocked them on that third map, Cash or whatever it was, in the round of eight. This, this, there were some really good games in this major. There were some top, top teams. It was very competitive. I don't think there was PC problems. I think this was a pretty good major. I think that deserves to be in B. I think I can stay in B, actually, that one. Then we have um, Kadavitsa 2019. There's nothing wrong with this major. It just didn't have as many epic games from what I remember. Like, one thing I remember was pretty cool was it had the Renegades run. Where Renegades, this is one of the first majors, I think, to use, like, the elimination and progression best of three series. Renegades really showed themselves to be legit in this one. They could have been top four, but they blew it against SK. Um, I think they were SK Gaming. Were they MIBR already? Oh, 2019, there must have been an MIBR. They blew it against MIBR in the quarters. Otherwise, they would have played Astralis in the semis. Uh, TL fucked up against Ents, even though Naf did that insane round. Na'Vi then fucked up against Ents, despite simple carrying and almost winning that 1v4. And then Astralis, unfortunately, had something of an easy clap run, including the final. This was a pretty good tournament, though. Like, I feel like this deserves to stay in B. Like, if it had had more memorable games, it could have gone up to A. There's nothing wrong with the event itself. It actually is quite a good format in general. I think also this format used where 
teams actually ranked each other, that ESL seeding system they were trying at the time, which was really cool. If I'd had better games, I'm really tempted to move it up to eight here. But I, I mean, what games are that great from it? It's like Na'Vi versus Ents. Isn't that about it? Yeah, it is. That's that's it. So then you have PGL Stockholm. Right, the problem PGL Stockholm had was there were some stream issues early on, but okay, a lot of that happens in events. It was the first event after the online era, and it meant that a lot of like the good teams from online just weren't good enough online. And even like the whack on its last legs, Astralis was beating out people like Spirit, who on paper should have been able to blast them out the server. But it just meant there was a lot of like, I thought a lot of the teams weren't in good shape. This is where Nip had no T-sides, but they had device. And they managed to make top eight of a major off that. This is where FaZe got to their hearts broken before they had ROPs because VP just wrecked them on that map, that epic ancient game. Um, G2 was being carried by Nico, one of the hardest carry performances you'll ever see at a major, but he couldn't win it for them, unfortunately. I mean, he had no business even being in the final. Heroic did turn up and almost made the final. Had an amazing game against G2 in the semis. Na'Vi didn't lose a map, and generally a lot of their series weren't that epic because they were just wrecking everyone. It was like VP's plow. VP themselves had made that change with Flit and proved themselves to be extremely hard to beat. Shout out my joke about the Viagra Addict. And then Simple not only won the major and was the MVP, but had like the most goated stats you've ever seen. So I think this does deserve to stay B because it didn't have that many memorable games as the problem. And the whole online, offline thing. We hadn't had many lands at this point in time. I think that gets to stay B. Now for Antwerp, this was where FaZe won. So the first time a proper international team has won. Carrigan gets his first major. Um... I think off the top of my head, this is the one where Rain got to be the MVP of the major, which was incredible. Whoever could have foreseen that happening? Great storyline. The semis was pretty good. The one they had against Spirit had like some good matches. Um, the one against Nip, Nip really could have won that series against FaZe. Actually, FaZe really like entertained. They always do. In this finals run, though, they really entertained. The final against Na'Vi was a banger. It was a really good final. Na'Vi themselves narrowly escaped Heroic in the quarters, but then easily beat Ents because Ents just didn't have the experience once they got there. Ents getting a freebie against Copenhagen Wolves is a bit meh, but whatever. The problem with this event is... It had like a few good games in the playoffs and a very good final. So I could see a world I could put up to A. Na'Vi really could have won this event. I don't think there was like problems logistically with the event, but I do remember the problem is a lot of the big names failed in Swiss. Like G2 and Vitality banged out in Swiss. Cloud9 banged out in Swiss. They even lost to bloody Imperial. I feel like for the matches though, does it deserve to go up one though? Because the final was amazing. The Rook series of Na'Vi was pretty good. Faze had some good games. Aside from the Ents Copenhagen Flames and Ents Na'Vi games, weren't all the matches good in this major? I think maybe that one gets to go up one. Yeah, maybe it gets to go up to A. Then we'll come to this. Dream Hack Winter 2013, the first ever major. Now, the problem is this has loads of things against it. So actually, I'll probably have to put it into the bottom one. Just the thing is, though, it's relative to the era as well, though, isn't it? Is it an absolute ranking or is it relative? In theory, it's absolute, right, because I'm doing all of them. So it probably has to go down here. And the reason why it probably has to go down there is this. It was only three days long. And every match except the final was just in the tournament area. So you know that epic match that Nip played against very games, like the game of the century and all that documentary. Yeah, that was just a tournament area game, you know, two days after the event had began. And then the final itself, which I think was right after the semis or something mental like that. Um, or maybe it was the next day. Had this insane thing where it was just in that dream arena where it's like a theatre, basically, with a stage area that you could show movies, but they were showing a game here. So it's not really the same as being in giant stadiums like most of the other majors, is it? Even the later DreamHack Winters had like a proper stage set up, like that one where LDLC won against NIP, like a, like a, like a 360-degree sort of stage thing so people could watch small sides. I think it probably has to go to the bottom for that reason, but there's no way it's going to be the worst because it still did have some good games. Like it actually had the um, very games versus Copenhagen Wolves match, which is a classic match up there. You had the complexity guys upsetting Astana Dragons in a three-map series. You had LGB play a pretty epic set of matches, actually. They won a map against NIP. Yeah, this was pretty good. Obviously, the semi-final itself was epic, even though it didn't really deliver on the third map. But before that, it was some really crazy shit. The final itself was pretty epic, even though Fnatic ended up winning and nicking it from the NIP somehow. 
The problem is the games maybe elevate that. Let me think. Do the games elevate it up, though, when the rest of the majors sucked? The problem is these majors barely have any good games. So it can't have five tournaments be the worst. So I think maybe that just becomes the worst of the C tier. Maybe we do it like that. So let me think. Would this be my number one, number one, number two? I think I'm fine with that as an order. I think I'll maybe do that. What should we do on this one? Boston, Columbus... I think I'm okay with that too. Inclusion of poker. She did have some good games. This was in the era though where we still had that, like, I'll tell you the problem that Cologne actually had. Where is Cologne? This one up here. The problem is, I actually think the reseed format of that was really fucking bad. So should that go into A tier as a result? Maybe it can be the best A tier event. Because it was that thing where you played an initial part of a group stage, but then people got paired off with other teams from other groups. Like, what is this? What is this? I think that maybe puts that down to there. These are all good. And we're going to here. What's that? Cologne 2014. All right, let's get into this. Because Cologne 2014, I have massive problems with. This was the one that had a randomizer. So after you did the veto for a best of three, you would just eliminate a map each, pick a map each, and then the last three maps, a randomizer would just pick one of the three. You had to play that no matter what. So, for example, Fnatic played against Na'Vi in the quarters. Both teams didn't like Nuke, by the way. This is a permaban map for these teams. They both just got to play Nuke as they decided. Neither team would have picked that, by the way, if the veto had been available. Then you had Cobble and Overpass added for the first event ever at this tournament with a randomizer. So you could only veto one. And if the other team didn't veto the other, it could just be picked as a third map, even if neither team wanted it. That's part of why Nip beat Cloud9. Epic game. That's part of how Nip beat LDLC with Envy and Happy. Uh, with Happy and Apex, sorry. And Maniac and Uzi. That's right, we can all name the players. And Kaylee, good old hacky boy Kaylee. So that ruined it already, the randomizer and the new maps. I mean, Nip basically won a major off this shit. Um... This is the one that had the Olaf Meister Molly graffiti. It had the Freiburg sign on, like, via whatever, on fucking uh, Banana for Freiburg because of winning the major. So it was like a pretty good major. The problem is, I do think it was horrendous, that randomizer thing. But it says it all about how many good games there were that I can still put it C, though. But maybe it's going to be the worst of the C. Second or worst of the C, we'll maybe do. Starlight of Berlin was the one where... You obviously had Astralis win it to win three in a row and four for the core. And this was the one where every top team was in terrible form after the player break because this was the first big tournament after the player break. And as a result, you ended up in a world where the top four teams were Team Liquid. They played way worse. They were in position to lose this major in the Swiss. You had... Um, People will probably have said Vitality because of coming second place at uh, Cologne and top four at Chicago. They were looking way, way worse. Obviously, they kicked MBK the second they got eliminated. They got banged out by a Vanguard in the round of eight. Entz was obviously a top two, top three team, making finals, being a top team. They were in the final of Chicago. They actually looked whack at this event. They booted Alexi B immediately afterwards because apparently there was something with a boot camp. The thing with MBK was apparently just didn't talk in one of the games and acted a bit petulant towards the rest of his teammates, gave him the cold shoulder, as it were. Um, Astralis themselves had been Brass Astralis hadn't won an event in ages in this tournament they lost to NRG they were playing like shit against that crazy team with Hunter and Otto and Esperanto etc really could have lost that series potentially but managed to get through then they beat Liquid in the quarters semis they had some an alright map or map and half or so against NRG but then they won that in the final they easily beat a Vanguard Renegades elsewhere beat Ents made it to the semis and blew it against the Vanguard after a close first map. There wasn't really many good playoff series in this one, quite frankly. There was some shocking results, but not many good matches all in all. And because of the level of form after the player break, I thought this was a pretty whack major. I think the playoffs were just shit. So I think that deserves to stay down here, but it certainly isn't like the worst whatever. And it's in an era where at least the, the format's a bit sturdier than some of the other ones. I think that gets to stay. I think that gets to stay. And then we'll go to these bottom ones. PGL Major, the Krakow one. Right, this was the one where you had PC issues. I mean, anytime that happens, I'm already getting a bit nervous that you're having PC issues at majors and top, top players are saying it publicly and privately. It's the first one to use Swiss, which second one to use Swiss, but it wasn't 
I mean, in general, I'm just not a bigger fan of Swiss, but whatever. There was novelty factor at this point in time. I had the Gambit Miracle Run. I still don't really know how they won that one. It's kind of BS, if you ask me. SK versus Strauss was probably the best match of the, of the tournament, which was the quarterfinals one, even though at one point in time, SK wasn't always showing up, but it was just such an amazing marquee match. So back and forth, device out playing Cold Zero and Fallen. It was just a really great match in some ways. Not necessarily the most entertaining of all time. Um, VP blew it on home soil. They had that match against North, where they did the epic comeback. Then they blew it against Immortals in the semis. Immortals themselves apparently were out drinking before the night of the final, so the final fucking so Thank you for that. Thank you for ruining Morv. So yes, whenever you were involved, Immortals, guys. Um, so that's just a fucking shit major, isn't it? It's got to be one of the worst. It isn't the worst, though. Face it, Major London. You remember this one? This was the Unlimited Eggs major, where they tried to get some PR back by saying a flat... Pasha that instead of being limited to two eggs, he could have as many eggs as he wanted. It's whatever, isn't it? It's just whatever, bro. Then we have um, more PC issues. This is where North had just won Stockholm Masters. They come to this tournament. They said they had big issues. They said it affected smokes and flashes and what you could do. Apparently, maybe even sound issues where you couldn't hear footsteps. And that's just a nightmare right there. That's got to put you close to the bottom already. Like, let me think. Does that actually make this the worst major ever? Because the playoff matches were better, but I think the tech problems should probably make you the worst ever, right? I don't know, though. I'll have to think about that. Because then we have Rio. Right, the problem with Rio is pretty simple, isn't it? Outsiders won, which is cool, but who did they beat? Which top teams did they play in best of three series that you remember? They played Heroic, that's it, basically, and Heroic fucked it up. Cloud9 should have played them in the semis, but fucked it up completely against Mouse because of Nafoni. Then you had Na'Vi, who had a bracket where it was like you play Fury into probably Heroic into like Cloud9, maybe. Like that should be a finals right there, if not a win. They blew it in the round of eight. They lost. Simple flipped off the fans. They flipped him off. What do you want? This is the way shit goes. Um, then Fury themselves, after that hype run, got to the semis and lost to Heroic. Then Heroic blew it in the final and made the final not a very good game. Like, this one just didn't really work, this major, for me in many ways. You also, in the Swiss, just had some terrible results where, like, FaZe, G2, didn't even make it there. Ence, Team Liquid, Vitality, all these teams who've been mixing it up recently just blew it completely. I mean, I guess Ence hadn't. They just made the Valdis swap, but they just blew it completely. It didn't get out of Swiss, didn't get to the playoffs. So the playoffs were just not very good for this one. Was it the worst, though? Don't think so. Surely, in theory, it's better than this, even though even though this had a classic game of like Astralis versus Gambit to some degree and SK Astralis. Blast Major had very few good games, though. Blast Paris, yeah, Vitality wins on home soil. First major and MVP for Zebu. Problem is, tier two teams are making the playoffs. I'm not talking just a QBF. We've got it. Game Allegiant, Apex, Into the Breach, Monty. What is this bullshit? Some whack matches in general. Like, I'm trying to remember the best matches. You had Team Liquid versus Aurora in Swiss. You had Na'Vi versus FaZe in Swiss. And that was mainly the last map. You had Heroic versus FaZe in the quarterfinals. That's it. That's it. That's all the really great games. Like Apex versus Vitality was like a, an exciting game or a good game. It wasn't like an elite game. It wasn't one of the all-time classic games. The problem is the games is what killed this major for me. Like that makes me think that maybe goes below even Rio. It's a tough one, I've got to say. It's a tough one. Let's just check if we're going to change any of these orders. Because that was like Dream Act Winter, the one with the Olaf pass. Probably did have better games than this one, though, right? Berlin was a banging spot, by the way. Then you had Katowice 2014, Cologne, which I do despise. Dreamhack Winter gets to be up there, even though it had some issues. Does that mean Dreamhack Winter, if it's only three days and BO1s, has to be down it? The problem is, it had a lot of good games, though. It had a very, very good field, one of those majors where you're not missing anyone. I think I'm actually pretty happy with this order. I think this is my pretty much my order. You've got like best is Atlanta, then Cologne, then um Cadavice 2015. Like I instinctively I've always said Columbus is up there, but then when I think of the quality of the games though, that's the issue, right? It doesn't really do it. I mean the million dollar part alone could make it be like top four, but then again, some of these majors have millions like Stockholm and that, but we're not putting them that high. I feel like this is a pretty good list, actually. As Mary J. Blige said in her track, All I Need, 
you're all I need to get by, which is the case for me and my Patreon community who support this channel and these videos. Some of them include Theogeny, Matt Pognaccio Rakula, Ahmed Haju, Joseph Adcock, Tosh, Bot Pounder 420, Toucan, Animosity, Tobias Bernasconi, Jensen Gore, Yurka, and a special thanks always to the main man, Jerky's Minion. Would you like to ask a question in my regular video AMA? Do you want teasers? Find out who upcoming guests are. Maybe you want to suggest a topic or a guest for my content, or you want to take part in one of those longer esports discussions with me where we go all over the place. Well, if any of those grab your fancy, put your money where your mouth is, join the Risk Illuminati today via the Patreon link in the description box below.